G'day, it's Rob there again. Well, that last video I did, I packed up, sorted up this Toyota alloy rim with the trusty old rough and ready black and decker circular saw. Did a good job, no problem. But it made a big mess, a big, big mess, which I wasn't happy about cleaning all that up after. So I was thinking, mm, you know, maybe reciprocating saw is the way to go to cut up the rim initially and also maybe to portion it, you know, once you get it in manageable sizes. So I asked the comments and got quite a lot of good comments back. I was pleased for that, so thanks. Um, and I've been thinking about a reciprocating saw for a very long time. I've got some work to do on the house, some guttering work which needs something like that to get in, you know, under the roofing, edge of the roof. So I thought, what the hell? As every workshop, home workshop owner knows, the golden rule is you can never ever have too many power tools. And uh, it's even better if you can buy them cheap. When I looked on the internet, well, what a bargain. The local hardware store had reciprocating saw out, 850 watt reciprocating saw, for the princely sum of $58. Can you believe it? And of course, not being one to pass my bargain, I had to go and get it, so check this out. Da da! An 850 watt recipro reciprocating saw with a couple of blades for $58, marked down from 100. Hasta la vista, baby. Not bad, eh? So, is it any good? Well, it's a Zito, and I've got some Zito stuff in it, it always works okay for me. Um, it's not a commercial grade unit, but it's a fair hunk of machinery, so I got that. I've got a few blades. You get a couple with it. You get a metal one and a, and a wood one. I'll just put these in this bag. So here's the original blades. Whoops, whoops. These two. And then I lashed out some extra money and I've got a a 10 TPI one, hang on, 14 TPI one that one is, and, uh, and I've got a, a demolition, bimetal demolition blade which, which is 10, so yeah that's a 10, and that one's a 14, it's a thick metal. And I looked on the internet to see what they recommend for thick alum, cast aluminium and they reckon 10 TPI. So today we're going to try the beast out see if it uh, can do the job and uh, yeah I'm looking forward to this new toy <laughs> I never have too many new toys I forgot to mention this saw is also variable speed that's 800 that's 800 rpm and uh, it's, uh, it's variable right up to 3000 Pretty good value. Well, it seems to be for, for 58 bucks. So now I'll try it. I'll use the demo blade first, and uh, I've got a rim, a bit of rim mounted here, and I'll go through from the top and I'll cut through the thicker section of it just to see how it goes. I'll move the camera over this way, and uh, I'll try it dry, and then I'll try it with a bit of lube. And uh, yeah, slower speed first, and then I'll work my way up. See, see how it goes. Should be interesting. Uh -huh, let's get a few more herbs, I think.
tad noisy. I haven't got the earmuffs on, I better get them. Yeah, well she needed a few more revs than just the uh, the slower speed, so I wound her up. Blade seems to be going alright. Hasn't knocked any teeth off it and hasn't galled up. So. Alright, we'll keep going. I'll put it on maximum. faster than I thought it went through this alright but the thicker section slowed it down. I'll swap over the blades and try the other blade. She bends rather than breaks. So there's no way you'd smash that with a sledgehammer. Not a hope in hell. This is flexible. This is tough stuff, I tell you. Look at the spring in that. That's not like ordinary aluminium, this is pretty brutal stuff. all the difference.
works pretty good. It shows you what you need to do. You need to put lube on it, a bit of lube, the 10 TPI blade, no galling, maximum speed, and uh, which is 3,000 strokes. And it just goes through quite easily. So what worked best? Well, the 14 TPI was slow going. The 10 TPI went through it good. Once you put some lube on it, it definitely needed lube. Saw, saw is bloody great. I mean, it's fantastic. 58 bucks. How could you go wrong on that? And uh, it cut through it, but obviously a lot slower than the uh, circular saw. So it's uh, it's a way of doing it. Mess wise, not too bad. The next one I'll try. I'll try on the metal cutting bean saw. So we'll move on to that and to see how that compares. The big danger with using a, a band saw like this is if, if it works in a regular shape like this and it, and, it's, and it slips in the vise, it'll almost certainly bugger up your blade, which is like a 30 buck blade, so yeah, I'd only cut up stuff that I knew I could hold securely, otherwise you could be up a big dough. I've got it on the high speed setting, we'll give it a go. Trouble, it can't go all the way through. Mm. I'll finish it off in the vertical position. bad. So what worked best? Well, there's no doubt about it. The circular saw did the best job as far as cutting it up in the fastest possible time with the least amount of effort, but it made a humongous mess and the mess is the big downer. Um, you can see I've spread a bit of newspaper around here when I was doing this and that was an easy way to clean up. I just put the sheet down here because the desk, <laughs> the bench has got a crack in it and the stuff can go down underneath. Um, but when you finish it, just fold it up and slide it into the, um, into the bin. The Super King still did a great job. I'm pleased as punch with this. This is fantastic. For the money, it's unreal. And with the right blade, 
10 TPI and some lube, it, it cuts through it good. And I'm pretty sure you could do a rim with this no problem, but it would be slower. Um, the portioning, yeah, it's good. The uh, metal cutting bandsaw does a good job in the horizontal and the vertical position. But as I said, you've got to be careful. I'm speaking from experience, if that aluminium twists uh, in the clamp, if it's in, uh, anything that's uneven in those jaws, if, it's, if it twists while it's cutting, it will put an S-bend in your blade and it will just stuff it right up. So be careful. But yeah, so overall, yep, this is great. Um, so a few more videos coming up down the track. I always look forward to your comments on these sort of subjects because everybody's played around and got their ideas and this stuff. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a learning curve all the way through. But that's what makes it interesting. That's what makes life interesting. So I hope you did find this interesting. And cheers for now. I'll see you next time.